We begin this morning in the Lower Valley where deputies have a frightening mystery on their hands. A missing man, a burned car, and a skull in the trunk. The remains were found in the Sunnyside area while a tow truck was removing the car from private property. This is at Emerald and South Emerald Roads. The driver told deputies he spotted what looked like a skull in that trunk. The car belongs to 22-year-old Preston Yanni of Prosser. His family reported him missing over the weekend. Preston is a graduate of Prosser High School where he played on the football team. The community is still shaken and holding out hope. Investigators have not yet identified the body found in the car. The remains will be sent to Seattle later this week for more testing. Most of us can think of a million things we'd rather do than mow the lawn. Speaking for myself right now because Jay enjoys it very much. Yeah, I enjoy it, but uh, you couldn't do it if somebody paid you, Lindsay, huh? I don't, think, I don't think you could pay me enough money to do that. I don't even know where to start, so it would be a disaster waiting to happen. The only time I actually did attempt to mow a lawn, yeah. Jay, um, my dad had a tractor. What are those? four-wheeler lawnmowers. Sure. Yeah, I got on top of it and it wouldn't break, so uh, <laughs> I was traumatized after that. How'd you get off it? I don't remember. It was so traumatizing. Did you jump off and just send it I into think, the hedge? I think I jumped off and rolled a bunch of times and uh, it was kind of like an army move. Heck. A Yakima man convicted of trying to sell drugs will spend 10 years in prison. Jose Narano Lozano was busted by undercover DEA agents last year for trying to sell them five pounds of methamphetamine. The 24 year old pleaded guilty to conspiracy to distribute that drug. And in more local news now, the Hanford cleanup effort is once again getting the attention of the White House. U.S. Energy Secretary Ernest Moniz was in the Tri Cities for his first tour of the site. His visit comes days after. A Hanford watchdog said the feds aren't doing enough to inspect the waste at Hanford. Secretary Moniz promised a plan to get rid of waste safely. He's also confident new radioactive tanks will be built by 2019. It's currently costing taxpayers more than $2 billion a year to clean up the waste at Hanford. A traffic alert in Franklin County for you. Construction on a local highway will put a damper in some travelers' plans. Through July 3rd, part of the Colotus Highway will be closed to all traffic. Crews are working on a sewage station from Commercial Avenue to Old Colotus Highway. Detours will be in place. And one lane on a section of Yakima Avenue will be closed for most of the day today. Crews will be repairing a loose trolley track from 6th to 7th Avenues. Yakima officials closed the lane because of safety concerns. Work should wrap up sometime in the afternoon. And coming up later this morning, we have a fun consumer report story. If you dread mowing the lawn, especially in the summer weather, there's still hope for you. Consumer Reports shows us the best lawn mowers out there that practically do the job for you. We'll show you what those are coming up on Action News. And uh, right now we can check in with the lawnmower guru himself, Jay Frank. He's at the Weather Center. Jay's the only guy I know that looks forward to doing his lawn every year. Jay? Why is that? I know there are plenty of us, Lindsay. Hollywood is mourning the loss of James Gandolfini. He's the Emmy Award winning star of The Sopranos. Plus an exclusive look at some upcoming movies, one starring a news anchor by the name of Ron Burgundy. Ring any bells? I'll have those stories and more in this morning's Ein Entertainment. James Gandolfini dies at age 51 while vacationing in Rome. According to HBO, the possible cause was a heart attack. Gandolfini cemented his place in Hollywood in the late 90s when he began playing the role of mobster Tony Soprano. He often said in interviews that he didn't think of himself as interesting, just a man doing what he called a silly job. Gandolfini is survived by his teenage son, his wife, and a baby daughter they just had back in October. Brad Pitt tries to stop a zombie invasion dead in its tracks in the summer thriller World War Z. Pitt plays former UN investigator Jerry Lane, who gets enlisted to lead the fight against a zombie pandemic that is threatening the world. When a zombie bites a person, they instantly become one, sprinting and clawing their way to the next victim. Usually happens in all zombie movies, but those ones look especially fierce. Pitt co-produced the $200 million action thriller, and he's hoping to turn it into a franchise. World War Z opens in theaters tomorrow and staying on the movie front this morning going from zombies to the newsroom at this hour in the morning i often feel like a zombie myself but the long anticipated anchorman 2 is coming out paramount is giving fans a first-hand look at the upcoming anchorman sequel will ferrell is back as ron burgundy and this time his san diego news team moves to the big apple to work at a 24-hour news channel i'm going to do the thing that god put ron burgundy on this earth to do have salon quality hair and read the news. That's exactly what I live for every single morning. And I think the name of that news team is Action News as well. What a coincidence that is. Anchorman 2, The Legend Continues, hits 
theaters in December. That is your Iron Entertainment for this Thursday morning. I'm Lindsay Adams for Action News. Now let's send it back over to Jay. Turning to Kennewick, where family and friends are mourning the loss of a young soldier who paid the ultimate price. Private First Class Robert Ellis was killed in Afghanistan just weeks before he was set to finish his tour overseas. This cooler weather we've been having for the past few days has given Benton County firefighters a breather. They tell us they've responded to fires daily for more than two weeks now. Not all of them have been as big as the ones in Finley or on Claude Felter and Jump Off Joe, but those are still smoldering and require fire crews to be stationed there. Despite the rain, firefighters say it only takes one hour for vegetation to dry out and become flammable.